Hey, afternoon everybody. How are y'all doing? Well, God's been talking to me about going live today, so I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to just come live and I just want to share something. I don't think God's question is, are you, you expecting God's best for you and your family? I think sometimes we get too much in the mindset and we speak too much about what is naturally going on. Hello. Hi Jess, how are you? And what God is doing is, is something brand new in my life and he's showing me brand new things and I'm telling you, my spirit man, hi Trevino, how are you, is just going off the chart. And I want to share some things and I, I think we need to begin to get a vision. Hey Ashley, we need to get a vision. Hello need to get a vision of what really God is ex showing us in his word. Because if we don't see it, then how can we begin to believe for it? I know we're not to walk by sight, we're to walk by faith, but I also know that God says, write the vision and make it clear. So I want to show you something that's really remarkable in the word of God, that just this last month, this last 30 days, I have I've seen... And um, I'm going to give a little bit of a testimony to kind of bring this more into perspective because God said it to me yesterday on my way to me and my granddaughter were going swimming. And, you know, God is for us. He is not against us. And God wants us to have his best. But are we expecting his best? Some of us don't even know what that looks like. Hi, Zeta. How are you, sweetheart? Some of us don't even know what God's best looks like. But I want to show you, I want to begin to get your mind changed, to renew it into something in the Word that we have read, we've shared, we've talked about. Good morning, Nick. Afternoon, Nick. And I want you to get it to a picture level in your mind and your heart to see something that we should be expecting from God. That His Word said it. But are we expecting it? So I want you to raise your level of expectation and begin expecting more from God. And so, Father, we just invite you in this and we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the seed of your word. We thank you that you're teaching us more and more and more about, thank you, Nick, about seed time and harvest. I haven't heard a whole lot until this, these last few months about uh, calling my harvest. I knew that it was possible that we would have a harvest. I know that God's word says when we sow, that whatever we sow, we shall also reap because God won't be mocked. But I didn't understand how that worked. So in, in James chapter 5, it was a breakdown for me by Jerry Savelle calling in your harvest. And it simply states that your harvest is calling for you. Are you calling for your harvest? Because you see, you're entitled to that harvest when you sow seeds. You can sow the word as a seed. You can sow finances as a seed. You can sow your home and letting people come and visit you or stay with you for a little while as a seed. There's so many ways to sow a seed, but that is, that means that's that seed. A seed for that is that name. And you have to name your seeds in order to get the harvest because you can't go out and just plant a seed without it knowing what the name of it is because then how does it harvest? You know what I'm saying? So if they gave me an apple seed and they didn't tell me what the name of the seed was and I went out and planted it, I wouldn't know that was an apple. I wouldn't even known it was okay for me to eat. I just planted it. The tree came up. Flowers came on it, blooms came on it, and then all of a sudden this, this, this fruit type thing came on it. But how would I know, without a name, what fruit I was going to be partaking of? What harvest I was going to have? So, he's really incredible. He is amazing, and I am more amazed by him every single day. So, here's the thing. People need to remember you have... The right to a harvest. It's a guaranteed harvest. So I was driving down the road the other day. Many of you know I was in an accident a few months back and I went and many of you know that I've already purchased a pickup and I wanted a blue 
pickup. I mean, I really, really wanted it to be blue or maroon. I got silver, but I'm not complaining. But I have questions for God. So I drive by the, the Chevrolet dealership and I see this blue GMC pickup there. And I was like, you know, I want, why not that blue GMC pickup? Why, you know, and I'm kind of thinking it, but God knows the thoughts of our hearts. He knows us. And as I, at, I think that, I hear God answer me. And he said, because that wasn't my best seed for you. That wasn't my best seed for you. So that got me thinking. I'm like, wow, God. Wow. But the pickup I have, because see, I was looking at blue. I was looking at GMC. And he said, that's not the best pick. That wasn't my best seed. He didn't say the best pickup. He said, that wasn't my best seed for you. So the one I have is a good seed. It's a best seed. And I want you to begin to, I want you to think about that for a while. I want you to begin looking at all the best seeds that God has done for us in our lives, our children, our grandchildren, our homes, our vehicles, provision, whatever it is. And I want you to start looking at it as God's seed in your life because he said he gives seed to the sower. Amen. And so I've been thinking about seeds a lot. I guess you can tell. I've been really thinking about seed time and harvest. And I have been calling for my harvest by the, to the Lord of hosts, who is the Lord of the angels. He's also called the Lord of Seboeth. It's in James chapter 5. The name Seboeth is in some translations. Some translations, it's the Lord of hosts, but it's he is the same. And he is the same. Hi, Gail. How are you doing? And so what we want to do is we want to expect God's best for us. We want to change our thinking from men the mentality of not enough, of uh, being in lack, because God says plainly there is no lack in heaven, so we are to be uh, think on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. We are to set our minds on those things, not on the things of the earth, in Colossians chapter 3. But uh, he showed me something through Jerry Savelle's teaching on what a harvest of 30 and a 60 fold and a hundred fold harvest would look like. And he, and, and uh, Jerry writes his down. Now I haven't been doing it because I give not because I expect in return, but God says he will not be mocked whatsoever a man soweth he shall also reap. And so Jerry Savelle started writing it down because God says he never forgets a seed sown. So if he never forgets a seed sown, it's okay for us to write down our seeds and keep, you know, and look at them. And that way we have a vision and it's clear what we can expect when it's sowed in good ground, okay? So I'm going to give you an example of a $200 seed sown. It's 30 times that amount. So if I sow a seed of 200 times 30, I can expect, the least I can expect, hey, John, is a $6,000 return on that harvest. That's the least I can expect. If I do 60 times 200, I can expect a $12,000 harvest on that word. Hi, Nicole. If I do 100 times, 100 fold return on a $200 one, it's $20,000 return as a harvest. So when we get talking about seed time and harvest, I know some people just close their ears and they turn away. Well, you know what? I hate that for them, but I'm going to tell you right now. If God says it in Genesis chapter 8, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will remain, then I can expect that's exactly what he means. Amen? He means that exactly. So I'm going to just trust him and I'm going to believe him. So what he had me do was, is just for the few months, what seeds I've sown. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there are some breakdowns. And he had me multiply it out on a page so I can look at it, okay? In just about 30 days, I sowed, if all, when my harvest comes in, if it's just a 30-fold return harvest on seeds, and I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on God. He multiplies our seeds. I could expect $123,000 harvest 
If it's a 60-fold return, I could expect $284,400 return. If it's a 100-fold, I could expect $474,000 return on my seed. Now, God set up the system. I didn't set up the system. But I'm expecting, hey, my Ty, how are you? I am expecting God's best. I am expecting God's best. Nicole, you have to stop looking at what you think is zero income. The Word of God is the seed. If you're sharing the Word of God, you're expecting a return on the Word of God. That is a seed, seed time and harvest. You know, one thing God says, get out of the lack mentality. That is of the world. If we're of the kingdom of God, which when we became born again and he delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light of the kingdom of his son, where are we seeing ourselves? You have to stop saying what it looks like in the natural because we are not of this world. I had a conversation with Lori this morning. God is moving mountains, mountains. And, you know, we can't speak if, if that's how we see it. If that's how we see it, then whatever we, as a man thinketh, so is he. That is such a critical place that we need to renew our mind and think like God says, tells us to think. Amen. So as a man thinketh, so is he. Hi, Lena. So what I want to share is, is when God, I looked at that blue GMC pickup because I really wanted a blue one. And I thought, why not that one? And God told me instantly, he said, that wasn't my best seed. That tells me that whatever we get, whatever he has for us, we want his best seed. We want his best seed. I started to say, when they asked me what colors of vehicle I wanted, I started to say, I don't want a silver one. And before I could get out, I don't want a silk. He said, be careful. Be careful. So I said, whatever you have for me, Lord. Whatever you have for me. So you see, I almost limited God's best for me. I almost limited God's best for me. But I was obedient to quickly listen to what God said. Don't, 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 don't say you don't want a silver one. Because that's what I got. I got a silver pickup. The minute I set in the pickup, I knew that it was my pickup. I knew that was the pickup I was supposed to have. Amen? But I can't limit. I can limit, but are you, are you, let's talk about you. Are you limiting God from giving you his best by how you think and what comes out of your mouth? Are you in fear and bondage? Are you open to the word of God knowing that is your seed and that as you speak it, you plant it and you can expect it to come to manifestation as long as you believe it and stand on it and don't be swayed by what it looks like in the world? What is your expectations? Are you looking to man to provide for you? Because I'm going to tell you, they're going to fall way short of God's best. I don't care if they gave you their best. It's still not God's best. So it's still short of God's best. God will use man to bless you, but we don't set our limits by God. Amen? I want to be obedient. I wanted to come on here, and I wanted to say what God says. You see, my ministry is about checking your flesh and denying it and going for the Spirit and agreeing with the Word of God. It don't set really well with a lot of people, but you know what? That's not going to stop me from sharing it. That's not going to stop me from talking about it because I'm going to share what God says for me to share. Amen? Because I know it's his truth. And his truth is the highest form of truth ever. Amen? I want his best for you. But you have to step out and ask yourself, are you expecting God's best for your life? Give it some thought. 
think about it. If the Bible says it's yours, then don't you let pride tell you you're not going to go after that. Don't let pride stop you from allowing your harvest that he has said is yours, and all you have to do is call for it, and loose the angels and bind the devil off of it and, it, it and and keep saying it and keep standing and believing and the harvest will come. But unless you put a sickle to it, it's not coming. Thinking about it's not causing it to come. Wanting it's not causing it to come. Doing something, the farmer plants in the field and he expects a harvest. He's not planting those seeds in a ground and not expecting a harvest from it. If he did, he was wasting his time. You have to start saying, this is the year I'm going to have the best harvest I've ever had. This is the year that I'm going to believe what God says, and I'm going to expect his best. And if he says I can have a 30, 60, and 100 fold, I believe I'm going to have 160, 30 fold. I'm believing it. I'm believing what God says. Are you? I want you to, but you have to do it. You have to do it for yourself. You have to stand on the word of God. Hi, friend. You have to believe for it. You do. And I'm praying with you and I'm agreeing with you that God's best is what I want for you, but I want you to want it too. Amen. God says we're to touch and agree, asking anything in his name. It will be done. Hi, hey, Brenda. Will be done by my Father who is in heaven. Will be done by my Father who is in heaven. So, what, you know, ask God for his best. Expect him to give you and bring you his best because that's what he wants for you. Do you know that he loves you just as much as he loves Jesus? He's not a respecter of person. What he'll do for one, he'll do for those who believe him, who trust him, who stand on his word and aren't moved by what it looks like. The one thing God has continually had me do is learn to deny my flesh and to trust him. That has been a challenge, but a challenge I took and a challenge I live by, always live by it because my flesh only knows what my flesh knows. But he says, lean not upon my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge him. And whose mind is stayed on the Lord is in perfect peace. And ladies and gentlemen, every day that I get up, I have situations, I have trials, I have tribulations. But my mind is always stayed upon the Lord. I'm always talking to him. And especially in the midst of the trials and the tribulation. What's the purpose of this? Show me what, what's going on. What spirits are operating here? What do I need to know, Lord? I need your wisdom. Help me, Lord. And when I'm weak, I call out to my friends to pray for me. Instead, I need prayer. Help me pray. They immediately start praying, and immediately the atmosphere begins to change. And by the, by the next day, difference. I'm talking about the next day, it's different. The anointing works. The power of prayer works when they believe what they pray, and they do believe it. If I ask them to pray, they believe that their prayers are being answered, and they are, and mightily. Amen? It's We've got to get out of this mindset of we have to think and lean and, and trust in the situation that when we cannot trust, hey, Cheryl, we cannot trust in the situations. We have to trust in the word of God. That's where we put our faith. That's where we put our trust. That's what we stand for. And when we've done all to stand, what do we do? We stand with the belt of truth girded about our waist, just like it talks about in Ephesians 6. But if we're fighting against people, we're fighting against the wrong enemy. Because it's not flesh and blood we war against. Not even in our own body. Not even in our own body. But the enemy. And together we can be victorious. Together we can stand and see him come in one way and God will make him flee seven. That's our promise from God. That's our blessing. We have a blessing. When? We hearken unto the voice of the word. 
when we are obedient to do what he commands us to do this day. It may be in Deuteronomy 28 about the blessings of the Lord and about obeying what he commands us to do, but his commandment from then to now changed after Christ went to the cross because Christ fulfilled the law. Christ has already fulfilled the law of the flesh. Christ did that for us. We can't do it. The, the reason that, that commandments were made was to reveal the flesh. Not that man could keep them because man couldn't and God knew that. But Jesus made the way. God gave us his best seed in Jesus who is the word. So you have his best seed, the word, Christ, his blood, his sacrifice, his grace, his mercy, his goodness, his healing. We, he gave us all of those. I command them to harvest in the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, he says my, my God is able to make all grace abound towards me that I have all sufficiency in all things and an abundance for every good work. That's his seed. That's his word. Plant it in your heart and let it harvest exactly what it says it's going to harvest. Because that's the seed. That's the name of the seed. Amen. God is so brilliant. He is so brilliant. I love him, how brilliant he is. I love the revealing of himself to us. I love that he can come into our worst situation and tell us to be of good cheer, for he has already overcome the world. Amen? My peace I give you, not as the world gives you, because in the world you will have tribulation. So it's not a shock to him when tribulation happens, because he already told us that it would happen, because why? It's in the world. But he also gave us good news. He also told us the best is that you're not of the world. You're only passing through. The best is that we can do it in good cheer. Why? Because we're not trying to overcome something. Christ already overcame it. We just have to renew our mind to go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Christ has already overcome this. <sighs> already takes a load off. I trust you, Lord. You order my steps. Holy Spirit is my guide, my counselor, and my teacher. What do you, what, show me the purpose of this, Lord. Because once you come up higher and you change your view to see what God sees, it's not about the situation anymore. It's about Christ overcoming it already. And you just trust and have good cheer that since God, Christ has already overcome it, it's already overcome. You change your mindset. You renew your mind. Be, not trans, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? You're more than an overcomer in Christ. This is already overcome. So whatever it is you're going through has already been taken care of. Are you expecting his best? Are you expecting his best? If not, Father, I pray that they begin to understand your wonderful wisdom and that we should wake up every day expecting your best. We should believe for it every day that your best will be what we have. It doesn't matter if it looks like it today or tomorrow. I can expect your best. I call the harvest of your best and I loose the angels to bring me your best and bring them your best. And I bind the enemy up. But I speak that every day and believe I receive it. I believe that I'm a receiver of what God says I can have. If that's the ultimate truth, if that's the highest form of truth is God's word, why would I allow to believe anything other than that? It doesn't matter what I think or see. He told me not to lean upon my own understanding, but in all my ways seek him. Amen. And he said, if my mind is stayed upon him, he will keep me in perfect peace. Amen. And when I have to do something I really don't want to do because people around me aren't really giving, you know, they're not, it's not ever whatever, you know, 
you can see it in their face no matter if I gave 150% or 200% or 1,000% of my effort and they look at me and they find one thing I didn't do and that's all they look at, that's not my fault. That's not my fault. But I can pray that God opens their vision. I can pray that they can actually begin to see the goodness that's around them. I can pray that God helps them know that they've already overcome every obstacle that's in their life, that they're trying so hard to do and do a good job and not hearing, well done, good and faithful servant. I can pray that they get their mind renewed. I can pray that they have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I can pray that whatever wounds that has been wounded them, that God reveals and heals them. I can do all that. I can't change them, but I can pray that God does. Amen. I can show them love. I can show them mercy. I can give them grace. I can do that because I think that's God's best for them. I think when us Christians start giving mercy and grace for people who aren't acting very godly or very nice or very anything that we would think would be appropriate, that instead of judging them, I can plant the seeds of mercy and grace because God says with whatever measure you measure the word and give it, it'll be measured back to you by the same measure. So if I want mercy and grace, I measure it out to other people and I'll get it back. I get the harvest of it back. And in this world, mercy and grace is wonderful. <laughs> mercy and grace for all of his people are wonderful. Amen. So I just want to ask you to begin to ask God for his best. I want you not to only ask. I want you to begin to expect it. If God brings correction to you, if God wants you to change your way of thinking, be willing. Be clay in his hands. Don't harbor bitterness or resentment or unforgiveness because all it's doing is measuring it back to you the same measure you're measuring it out. So it's whatever seed you're sowing, you're going to reap the harvest. I crawl for crop failure on those seeds that are not sown in good ground. But I call for a beautiful harvest and multiplied harvest for those seeds that you've sown in good ground. Be good ground. Amen. Well, Father, I came on here faithfully as you've led me to do, and I pray a blessing. I, I know that we're already blessed. We can't ask for something God's already given us because it's kind of like if I have a car keys in my hand and I'm asking, I want a car, I want a car, I want a car, and he's already given me the keys to the car, why am I still asking for something that he's already given me? Wisdom. <sighs> Isn't it nice just to know that he says, Hi, Mom. He says that we are the seed of Abraham and the blessings of Abraham are ours when we do what he commands us to do and he commands us to, to believe for those who believe in the name of this, his beloved son and those who love others as we love ourselves. That's obeying his commandments. So when you begin to walk in that and try to love other people the way God says for us to love other people and all of a sudden you see this stuff coming up in you that it's not so loving to other people and actually kind of ugly, that's him bringing the dross. You're putting, he puts you in the refining fire to refine you and remove that out of your heart. Don't justify ugly. Ask God to remove it and repent from it. Don't keep it. Don't harbor and don't harbor harbor resentment or bitterness, or resentment or any of those things towards other people, because God. And if we do that, I'm going to take it to the highest form of the truth, and that's when Jesus Christ on the cross, who saw people, who knew people, who knew their name, could cry out, nailed to a cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Can't we do the same? Didn't he forgive us? Didn't he give us the gift of grace, unmerited favor? We didn't do anything to earn it. Quit waiting until people you think deserve it. Because, honey, I'm going to tell you right now, 
I don't want to be in the judgment seat. I'm not going I don't want to judge the judge. I've repented from that. I've put myself there. But I don't want to judge God. I don't want to judge him. I want to trust him. And I want to expect his best. Y'all have a blessed day. Share this. Someone needs this. Multiple people need this. I'm sowing a seed. I'm sowing a seed of love, mercy, and grace. I'm also sowing a seed of wisdom and understanding and how his kingdom is and what we can expect. Everyone, y'all have a blessed day. Love you. God bless. Plant good seeds in good ground and expect God's best. Love you. Bye-bye.